All right, we are live for a Friday edition of the Mike and Mario Show. Excited to be back and uh, looking forward to wrapping up this past week's highlights as well as talking about what is to come in the future. But before I do that, Mario, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, I'm doing well, Mike. Uh, I've had a pretty good week. And you, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing good, man. Doing good. We got two, at least two good days of weather this past week, which is surprising. Took advantage of it and definitely got outside a little bit. And so feeling a little bit refreshed this Friday. So looking forward to talking about a variety of subjects. And uh, we, we kind of ended last week uh, talking a little bit about keeping our eye on Japan. And so I know you have thoughts with that. I have some thoughts with that and some recent developments on what appears to be from this article we're going to share uh, the attempt to unwind <laughs> or to maneuver some kind. This uh, Ponzi scheme, which has been un- which has been going on for 30 years or so with quantitative, whether it be easing, tightening, whatever we want to call it. But uh, I think it's something worth keeping an eye on just because I think we can learn a lot from this. And so uh, there's a couple other stories as well. But it looks like gold and silver is doing a nice little thing this morning. So uh, definitely going to be a good day. But um, let's just jump right in. For those who are tuning in, uh, feel free to throw out some thoughts, ideas and suggestions in the chat. We'll try to jump on those uh, when we get to the Q&A par- portion. But uh, yeah, so let's jump right in, man. So I want to share with you an article that caught my eye. I want to get your take on some things and just uh, see where it takes us, man. So here we have, uh, as it says here, the Bank of Japan's next five trillion man has worse job in economics. And so apparently from just reading through this, you know, he's coming in as a predecessor that is going to, I guess, rebrand, redo, remodel or try to shake up and undo Abenomics, which is un un, 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 un unlimited quantitative easing because i think japan is the basically the ground zero for that experimentation and it's not working it hasn't worked it doesn't work we know that okay but one thing i want to read to you mario and then get your thoughts on it because i think the bond market as well as the currency will definitely tell wonders but um you know you know this gentleman here but it says here one reason why he was selected uh kashida's first choice said no and then it says, uh, you know, the deputy of Japan would never knew better than to take a gig requiring him to unwind roughly 23 years of quantitative easing and reducing a five trillion dollar balance sheet the size of Japan's economy without crashing it. So the new guy in charge, that's his task to basically do all that without crashing <laughs> the uh, global economy. And of course, he will not be able to pull it off. But in my in your in your opinion. What would this do to confidence in the debt market, not only in Japan, but also globally, if, if anything? Well, first of all, I don't think you'll be able to unwind all that $5 trillion. Uh, it doesn't sound as much, but Japan is a much smaller economy. It's 100% of their GDP. And uh, it will be highly significant for the whole for the whole world, for uh, the major bond markets like uh, U.S. Treasuries, uh, gilts, and the European or the EU bond markets, because uh, because of contagion, <laughs> and, and Japan has got probably I think uh, after the U.S. the second bond uh, biggest government bond market in the world. Uh, I think Germany and Italy are near there as well. So. And Japan has uh, provided a lot of uh, liquidity to the Western financial system because their interest rates have been low for so long. And uh, a lot of Japanese savers have parked their funds abroad uh, to get higher rates. Mm-hmm. But uh, this guy, uh, this he's going to start out on the 1st of April, Ueda. Uh, it, it looks like he was the only guy brave enough to take on the challenge. Uh, the deputy uh, governor of the Bank of Japan uh, said no. And this guy is supposed to be the Ben Bernanke of Japan. Uh, he went to MIT as well. Right. So is he really going to like unwind this uh, madness? I don't think so. And, and I sent you uh, uh, just now also uh, what the Bank of Japan has been doing. They, they did start unwinding their balance sheet as you can see in the bottom left hand side but now they're doing qe again and uh apparently they've done 600 billion uh since september 600 billion dollars not yen and and the the fed has done 350 so uh global liquidity is actually continuing to increase despite what we hear from people if you add on the bank of japan what they're doing 
They're yeah. kind of holding everything together, I would say. So yeah, it's definitely important for the rest of the world. And I think it's an impossible task to unwind a Ponzi. Yeah, I do agree. And I'm looking at their uh, debt to GDP and it's 240%. And the fact that they've been in negative territory for so long. And so like just that thought of them trying to bring it into, I guess, neutral, you know, just, just take it neutral, then eventually positive. Like then that, that in and of itself, the, the, the extra cost on the current debt that they carry and everything they're going to try to do beyond that would definitely uh, swallow the government up in its entirety, wouldn't it? Yeah. And then currency yeah. itself. Well, what, what it would do as well, uh, it would, uh, if they try to unwind the 5 trillion, trillion of QE, that means they're going to have to sell a lot of JGBs. Who's going to want to buy it? Uh, well, what will happen is that uh, to attract buyers, they're going to have to let rates go up, which means a lower price. And with a with a debt to GDP of over 200 percent, can you imagine the financing costs? It would uh, completely bankrupt the Japanese government. Yeah. So here, just thumbing through, you know, the amount of damage done through debt. And so we got Japan at 240.7 percent, Greece, Singapore, Italy. United States at 113, France, where's the UK at? What is the United Kingdom? 78%. Oh, that's wrong at 78%. That's for so sure. This, so this is, oh, uh, so this is that data from the world. <laughs> well, why don't you go into the US debt clock? Oh, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. you can go into the uh, world, uh, different countries debt clock. Yeah. And I think that could be a little higher. Yeah, let's check that out real quick. So yeah, like an idea, and of, of course, as of, this past week, due to the CPI figure that I guess caught people by surprise, uh, they're talking about possibly going for a 50 point hike in the next go round. So, um, yeah. let me grab this real quick and then we'll keep it moving. Uh, but I think it's PPI, definitely the PPI was quite high yesterday as well. Uh, here we have let me just move this around. You see, here. the UK, uh, it says 108 percent. So, there you go. Mm. And okay. the U.S., uh, if you go to the U.S., that's that's just that they've taken out the debt uh, that uh, is held by uh, government and the, mm -hmm. the Fed, but it's yeah. more like 123 percent. If you go to the just the U.S. debt clock, uh, um, if you move away from the world, yeah. you see the U.S. is 120 percent there. Uh, yeah. That's the real number. And I would say it's more like 150 because they, they don't, they use, uh, uh, they use, uh, 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 they don't, they don't use nominal GDP to calculate mm -hmm. the debt to GDP. They use the real GDP, yeah. uh, which takes away uh, the inflation. So nominal GDP, uh, sorry, yeah, they use the nominal GDP which looks a lot bigger, it includes the inflation of the currency. So yeah. that 120% uh, is more like 150 if you use real GDP in the US. Yeah. So I would say uh, all these debt figures are a lot bigger. Uh, yeah, the Japanese, it's uh, as, as big uh, as it is. Yeah, and this one, this deck, <laughs> the debt clock for them said almost 300%. So. Um, yeah, could you imagine running a deficit in your personal finances? Like, you know, <laughs> li literally living off credit cards, trying to just pay the bare minimum principal without touching. Yeah. I mean, that's like having, let's say you earn a hundred thousand dollars a year, your household, and you, uh, you've got three hundred thousand, uh, dollars in debt. Not, not, you know, and that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, but anyway, so the whole point in this uh, situation about Japan is that, you know, I think it's very interesting that their narrative is that they're going to try to unwind. And it's just interesting how all the central banks around the world are coordinating this this narrative of the need to dial back, basically remove the punch bowl. And to me, it's, it's strategically been done. I think that by them all getting on sync, all the major banks are now in sync with the narrative of wanting to tighten, you know, and have some type of landing. But yet, in reality, I think we're all fighting against, you know, that crash and burn scenario. And of course, the people who will be caught in the middle, the casualties of this monetary experiment will be the holders of their fiat currencies, because ultimately that's how they're able to manipulate, of course, through the interest rates or whatever. But ultimately, you know, that's why, you know, gold and silver, of course, can never stop telling people that, you know, take matters in your own hands, get some real and physical that you can hold and feel just so that you can assure yourself against the malfeasance 
of these fraudulent criminal monetary. <laughs> yeah, I'll stop at that. <laughs> well, they're pretending that they're doing something about it. Um, mm -hmm. And they're not because in the U.S., for example, I would say CPI is a lot more than 6.4%. Uh, I've heard uh, that uh, they've uh, changed the way they calculate CPI from the first uh, from January 2023. What they've done is they uh, narrowed the, the time instead of a two year moving average it's a one year moving average. They're going to do everything to like uh, uh, tinker with the CPI lower, but that's still not working. And uh I sent you, I think, something about uh, consumer spending r rising over a trillion dollars in the yeah. U.S. Yeah. And, and, but so why is consumer spending still going through the roof if the Fed is tightening? Well, because the Fed is not tightening enough. If you uh, re look at the real uh, rate of CPI, uh, as per John Williams of Shadow Stats, it's more like 13, 15 percent. Uh, with a Fed rate at 4.6 4 or whatever uh, it is, the effective rate, uh, you are getting uh, paid to borrow money. So, yeah. um, yes, uh, like you said, uh, fiat current, you know, they're, they're doing what they're doing is they're writing off the debt with inflation. And at the same time, uh, uh, telling people that they're not uh, yeah. is just uh, the way it is. Uh, and then that, and that's just that's just the, the central bank. So that's just the, the, the chairman of the bank saying that, you know, we're going to fight this. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. Of course, all, you know, just a narrative. But then in, on the fiscal side, we got the government, Biden talking about, you know, economy strong and, you know, everything is better. And they, even, I, I even saw yesterday, I didn't verify, but, you know, it was across the screen. Biden talks about the blue collar, blue collar work act or something like that. Another <laughs> another bill, another piece of legislation yeah. designed to, you know, you know, yeah. borrow. And then they're gonna say they yeah. gonna inject it. Yeah, let me actually go ahead. You guys gonna say? Well, if the economy is doing so well, why does the government need to keep spending? Why do they have to come out with that omnibus uh, bill uh, at the end of last year, one point seven five trillion dollars? Uh, so uh, it, it, it's all like uh, it's all because of government spending and consumer spending. Uh, I was reading an article as well about the European natural gas prices that they've fallen a lot. And yeah. uh, I think I sent you that. But yeah, what, what, uh, what, what the article says is that the economy is going to be doing better. Uh, and uh, guess what they say the reason for it is? Well, because consumers are going to be spending more and the governments are spending more. So that's how the Keynes look at uh, economic health. <laughs> more government spending and uh, more consumer uh, debt driven consumer spending. It, it, it's it just not sustainable. Yeah, uh, there was a there was an article. Uh, let me I'm gonna try to find it real quick. <laughs> so it was I think Wall Street Journal and it said the best way to uh, uh, save money is to skip breakfast. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I tweeted out that that was their Marie Antoinette moment. Yeah. <laughs> the best way to fight inflation and to cut down on costs is skip breakfast because it's the most it's the most expensive meal of the day. <laughs> well, uh, oh, I tweeted that out and someone actually said, uh, well, th this is not, th they're actually serious about it. That, you know, that's how. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the, that's, the, that's the sad part about it. The fact that they probably really are serious with it. Um, but then again, it just shows where how, you know, problematic, chaotic things is where desperate times cause for desperate measures of saying anything. But yeah, um, another, okay. but, go ahead. another example of how how can an economy be doing so great if you have to cut cut breakfast off your budget? Right. 100 percent. And then here is just more highlight and kind of hinting what you were talking about earlier. But I'll put this on the screen. Let me man, I'm everywhere right now. Uh, let me share this. But. Just the headlines itself. Household debt hit record 16.9 trillion last quarter. So the figure was what was it? 300 and something. Uh, it was 300, uh, 394 billion dollars last quarter, which is the highest amount of debt taken out by the consumers on credit cards in the last 20 years. So this past year, to me, this past fall and winter, whether it be Christmas shopping, holiday shopping, or barely making it, and that's when the whole job tsunami began of people losing their you know primary source of income and i guess going to credit cards as a way to subsidize that but like that is another indicator of how bad things are to where 
jobs is an issue. But on top of that, people are swiping a credit card as if like they have the same authority as central banks, as if they can run a negative deficit on yeah. perpetuity until just what? And then again, a lot of people know that they're going to default on the debt. So it's like, uh, yeah, whatever, but okay. Well, when you use your credit card and you pay for things on the credit card, you are uh, acting almost like a central bank uh, yeah. creating uh, uh, cash out of thin air. So, but right. uh, again, it's because uh, rates are negative really. So you're actually, uh, it actually is, is attractive to borrow. The, mm -hmm. the uh, flip side, the danger of that is if you get into too much debt and then you lose your job, you can't pay uh, your debts back. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, like, so I even seen uh, articles talking about how uh, a lot of banks, commercial banks are starting to dial back and be more restrictive on who and how they let people borrow by basically cutting off the credit card because people realizing that credit card has become a primary source of, I guess, I can't even say income, but it's being used as a source of income. And here's that article, uh, the comment you mentioned earlier, uh, referring to the things of that nature. So, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, all right. So I want to get your thoughts on a couple more things here. I sent you an article and I'll just, I'm, I'll just skip around a little bit, but here's something that I thought was uh, interesting. Russia to roll out a CBDC pilot with real consumers in April. And so outside of the narrative being painted about Russia being this, Ukraine, this and that, all countries are still full steam ahead working towards rebranding their current monetary and financial networks mm -hmm. with this CBDC. And so even though a lot of people like to paint Russia and Putin as being that guy who's disrupting things, you know, the bricks that they're going to be down. I mean, OK, but they're still working towards the same thing the West is in reference to rebranding their currency. So it's, it's they're doing it strategically together and giving us a bunch of smokescreen mirror stuff of like how they're going to unwind these things because of the conflicts in the West. But anyway, what are your thoughts on this? Does, does this surprise you at all? No, no. I, I mean, uh, it, it's not, uh, I, you know, it's uh, it's clear that Russia and other countries are trying to de-dollarize and get out of the uh, uh, Western system because of all the sanctions and the freezing of reserves. And, and they're buying a lot of gold uh, to support their new monetary system. Uh, but it doesn't mean that uh, uh, they, they will be like... Uh, a sound money country for their domestic, for their uh, plebs, so to speak. And so it doesn't surprise me that they're, they're going for CBDCs, even though uh, I think last year uh, Russians bought the most gold uh, in a very long time because uh, Putin uh, and the government there, they took out the VAT from gold and they allowed people to buy gold to protect themselves. Uh, and uh, but uh, CBDC, who knows? They, I, I think there is a, a Russian economist. Uh, I forgot his name. They're working on a, a gold-backed CBDC. So who knows? Yeah. But uh, I, I personally, I personally would, would would love to have no government involved in currencies or money, right. you know, the free market uh, way. But uh, Yes, um, I'm not surprised uh, they're working on CBDCs, but notice that it's just a pilot thing. And, mm -hmm. and I think in China as well, it's just a pilot. It's not like a, a lot of people say, oh, China has CBDCs. Everyone is like being sur surveilled, but it's just a pilot. And uh, I read something uh, a few uh, months ago from a former PBOC official saying mm -hmm. she said that uh, this uh, CBDC pilot is not really going too well because people are not really uh, adapt adopting it. So it's still right. early days uh, here right. in the UK. Uh, the Bank of England and the Treasury they've come out with like a consultation paper. I spoke about it uh -huh. uh, in a video last week. Uh, yes, they're all pushing for it. Yeah, and that, and that's just for so for retail use for everyday person. And however they're going to maneuver to where they're going to either inter interconnect it with their current bank account or just merge it to where we won't even know how it takes place on the back end. But and that's where I, I think uh, outside of that, like the gold back uh, narrative that also is out there. Here's an article uh, it says Russia's spur bank launches gold back uh, crypto assets on its blockchain. So they are finding ways to use this technology to incorporate gold into it, but it won't not be for the retail user. That's the problem. I wow. think it's going to be more so for interbanking internationally as a part of that BRICS payment network, yada, 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 in the future. But what do you think? 
Well, Spur, Spur Bank, I think, is the biggest bank in Russia. Uh, yeah, it, it looks really interesting, uh, gold-backed crypto asset on its blockchain. Uh, what would be really uh, good uh, for Spur Bank is that I would be able to go into one of their branches and say, I, I want a, a, my ounce of gold. But I doubt they'll do that um, right. because that's what gives the system a discipline that, that you're able to redeem the gold. Right. Uh, once they stop or convert convert once once they stop convertibility uh then you can't trust it even if they say it's gold backed uh you need to have convertibility and allow people to convert it at a fixed rate i would say as well yeah and um i think a lot of the events unfolding and we touched on a little bit last week but it's it's escalated even more uh the situation in nigeria and so I've seen some articles. And I actually watched a very detailed news outlet from Nigeria, on, you know, of course, on YouTube. But they were just talking about how uh, there's four major, uh, like basically protests in four major cities. Not hasn't hit Lagos yet, but they got people going in the banks, like, stripping off their clothes, like demanding that they get their money. And so literally an intended cash scarcity created on the narrative of we're going to replace those old notes with these new ones. While all along, them encouraging people, just hey, save yourself the headache. Just use the Enera. Just use your phone. Like, you know, it, it's it's you get you can get access to everything you need. Like, so people are it's a major pushback, and a lot of people are not going for it. And so that type of things are going to happen in the lesser developed countries, just because they can probably get away with it. And so I think in the developed countries like U.S., U.K., Russia, they're going to try to work these pilots while also. We got so much chaos going on here, Mario. I'm sure you heard about the train derailments. The water system now is in danger. Okay, so all that stuff. So it's it's, it's so all that stuff is still in play. It's just one of many other things that they're trying to unwind at the same time. Yeah. So There's it's, also it's, uh, the CFTC. Uh, one of the data providers uh, for the CFTC has been hacked, and they haven't updated uh, the open interest numbers for all the uh, – futures exchanges in the US since the 24th of January. Uh, and uh, I spoke about that this morning in my video. And uh, yeah, do you remember we covered, I think last year, a cyber mm. polygon and uh, Klaus Schwab's uh, yeah. cyber pandemic. That could be a, another thing that uh, uh, could disrupt things. Uh, you've got also the situation with uh, China and Taiwan. Uh, I think it was the first time in 20 years that a, a U.S. military official uh, visited Taiwan. So, yeah, and, and it's huge. Taiwan is very important for semiconductors. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to see more disruptions. And that's why I'm noticing that none of these are coincidences. Like we had a fire. Uh, what was it? it was a fire at a plastic plant down in, I think, Florida. So just all this... Yeah, so this is what's happening, you know, in the U.S. And, of course, I'm assuming it's happening in the U.K. as well. Are you guys having a lot of, you know, an anomalies that are just, you know, hard to describe over there or, or what? How's that strike situation going as well? Yeah, I mean, we haven't had, like, uh, derailments and fires like that. But, uh, yeah, the, the strike situation is still uh, present. I think it's kind of uh, subsided a little bit, but I think it's going to get worse. But, uh Things are relatively calm right now, but uh, I detect that uh, the guilt yields, the bond market yields in the UK, they're starting mm -hmm. to go up again. Right at right when like uh, mortgage deals are coming back, because mm -hmm. last year when we had the the guilt crisis and the meltdown in the pound, uh, a lot of uh, mortgage providers they they took out all their deals. You know, people thought the housing market was gonna like crash. Uh, but and then the Bank of England intervened, did not QE. But I, I see rates going up again, and uh, I think that will be a, a big problem uh, for the UK. And, and they're still pushing this uh, narrative with the Ukraine. I, I detect also that uh, they're pushing here the fact that uh, the UK armed forces are very underfunded, they, that they need to increase military spending. I saw General Milley in the US saying. We need to increase military spending because we're spending a lot of sending a lot of our stuff to Ukraine. Uh, the Germans just said today that uh, they're going to 
uh, spend 2% of G GDP permanently on military. So we could see uh, military spending uh, uh, be what drives up uh, GDP because mm -hmm. that's government spending. So I, I think uh, it's not just here in the UK, it's happening all, all over the place. And the excuse, of course, is the, uh, the threat mm -hmm. from China, you know, the threat from Russia or the cyber threat. Yeah. And so that expenditure there, as it leaks into the main economy, as far as, you know, the, the, for more jobs, for military usage and all the types of stuff like that, that could be more juice added to the punch bowl to basically drag, kick the can further down the road to keep markets fraudulently, you know, hopeful, optimistic to where people will see, oh, you know, my portfolio, da, 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 whatever's doing well. And then, you know, it, how will that impact, you know, the, 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 the gold and silver, you think? Like, because typically it's, in, it's inverse whenever the stock does well, gold does. You know, so uh, do you see, because still confidence is high in metals in general, and it's going to get higher as more currency corruption happens. But what do you think yeah. will happen to gold and silver? Is it going to continue to rally or what? Well, yeah, uh, I, I sent you a, an article here. It's an interview with John Paulson. I don't know if you've got it. I can yeah, let send me you. pull it up here. Let me yeah. Here I got it. Yeah, uh, I mean. Up. We can go over that because uh, he thinks he, he's a guy who made billions uh, during the subprime crisis in uh, 08. And now he says you have to own gold. So because the West is going to keep inflating uh, and government spending and deficit spending for the military is very inflationary, especially yeah. if, if you uh, start a war. So if you scroll. Uh, Let me zoom on. Yeah, if you here, you see uh, he uh, uh, there the other uh, a bit further. Scroll up a little more. Down, no down. Uh, there you go. Uh, it says there uh, in the middle of the next paragraph that points to the, the pre, uh, that points to the immediate long term depreciation of the dollar versus other currencies. The amount of money printing the U.S. central bank has done in order to stimulate the economy has also caused doubt. Uh, a lot of our growth is based on fiscal spending that has to be financed by Fed buying the debt. Mm -hmm. So, And he goes at the end of that paragraph, gold will go up and the dollar will go down. So you'd be better off keeping your investment reserves in gold at this point. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a... A guy who made billions uh, from the uh, subprime crisis. He's saying you need to have gold. And I agree yeah. with him. <laughs> he knows a little something about how to uh, take advantage of opportunities at yeah. the government's expense. <laughs> so and as we're seeing here, we're seeing a little bit, a little bit of a bid upward. You know, what, I mean, what, what, what came out today? What, what happened? What, yeah. uh, what happened recently that, that caused this bite, this, this pump up, you think? Well, actually, uh, this morning here in London, when we are five hours ahead of the U.S., Gold Watch actually got hit hard, and we made a new low at eighteen eighteen. Mm. Yeah, but uh, now it's come back. Uh, I haven't like uh, seen any news or anything. There hasn't been any data come out. Maybe, uh, maybe it's just uh, oversold, you know. And uh, we we've dropped quite fat, quite a bit in the last uh, since the beginning of the uh, month after the Fed meeting. Uh, yeah. Actually, after the Fed meeting, uh, gold went up to like 1960, but then turned around and we've been going down ever since. Uh, I, I think technically, if you look at where gold ended uh, last year, it ended around 1825. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is like a technically a, a good uh, move. We come back to retest last year's close and we've bounced off it. But uh, again, I, I think... Uh, this is the time when if you have some extra fiat that you go out and you try to buy some gold if you can or some silver if you can afford it. This week I, I bought a, a one ounce um, gold Britannia. I mean, <laughs> only one, but I had to spend uh, almost 1,600 pounds. Yeah. But uh, I, I, th I bought it like a couple of days ago when gold, gold was going – down quite quickly in pounds and uh yeah and that's what people need to understand you should try to exchange your fiat 
when sentiment is bad, not when it's like making new short-term highs. Mm -hmm. And try to do that. Well, you know, I was lucky I had a, a, a little bit extra to get some of it anyway. Yeah, psychology is something else, ain't it? It's not until you see all green, you're like, oh, man, let me go ahead and get a part of this. And it was red, you're like, nah, I'm going to hold. <laughs> yeah, psychology drives markets. But, okay, let's get to some Q&A real quick. We're about 30 minutes or so. All right, let's open up a little bit, Mario. Let's get some questions and um, see what I see. Uh, yeah, Chris Conman has something. Uh, let me uh, get that question here. What do we have? Uh, show on stream here. Let me zoom this out the way. Uh, we got, uh, what do you, when do you think the Moscow Medical Exchange will open to compete with the LBMA and the Crimex? Thanks. Mm, good question there. Good question there. Um, that is a good question. Uh, assuming was, it was in the works or was it a set date to begin operating or what? That's one thing I don't know, but. Yeah, it's um, the uh, Moscow uh, world uh, world standard, isn't it? I, I mean, I, I don't know when it's going to be set up. It's probably could start this year, but I haven't, uh, they announced it last year that they're going to start. Uh, but I, what I think is happening in Russia, they're already selling a lot of their uh, mining production to China mm -hmm. directly because they can't, they used to be able to sell it to the LBMA, but the LBMA, uh, they, uh, they uh, strip these Russian uh, refiners off the LBMA. So, they have to sell it to China. So all that means is there's going to be less gold uh, in London. <laughs> and that's another uh, another backfiring of, of these sanctions uh, against Russia. It's just going to uh, hurt the West even more. But uh, I'm sorry, Chris, uh, I, I don't know exactly when uh, they're going to start, um, I mean, uh, trading. Um, I, I think my so this is just my suspicion. You know, between now and August, when the BRICS have their official meeting to, you know, basically bring in some new members and the narrative of them off, off, you know, mention about their new payment system or something like that, I think we're going to see a lot of uh, interesting stories unfold in a mm. not so in a not so positive way because I think possibly after August heads to fall, mm. if the BRICS do come through with that threat or promise that they're going to work on their own currency amongst themselves. Mm. Yeah. I'd imagine for sure that uh, Moscow, as well as the Shanghai Gold Exchange, as well as India's new uh, gold exchange as well, will yeah. all somehow benefit from that announcement. So yeah. before the end of this year, you know, Chris, I'm sure you're going to hear more about that. And it's going to be shown in the price. <laughs> yeah, there's, sure. a, there's a link here. I mean, the story is too long, but uh, I'll send it to you. You might want to put it in the... Uh live chat let me send it to you as a private this was from last year and they're talking about that okay. so maybe chris might be able to read that all right i'll put it up and then i'll put it also put it in the chat as well yeah. um yeah so feel free to ask some questions if you guys have any uh, uh, what, else you what else you see out there mario name of the game of control i'm trying to find this so i'll sorry. put that article yeah so i'll just put the article in the chat if you guys want to read more about that yeah all right let me see here what was the questions we got here uh the digital queen what's happening um i'm, I'm curious just because i don't get a chance to dive into it how's uh i guess the king doing how's I the king know. doing i think he's uh, alive Am I? No. uh well no I, I don't know really i don't really follow up i just know that there's going to be his coronation is going to be i think in may may 6th but apart from that i haven't heard much uh I mean, uh, the uh, coins are, they're like uh, mincing coins with him on the back, on, on the, on, with his head already. But uh, apart from that, not much. Uh, there's, uh, of course, all that uh, Meghan and Harry uh, distraction <laughs> that I, I don't know much about. My wife uh, follows that a bit more than I do. <laughs> I know. So also, they're going to have some bank holidays. Um, shut oh, yeah. Down. In, in May, and, yeah. In May, yeah. Uh, I think I, I think I saw something about it was a couple a couple billion will be lost in you know when when everything shuts down like so basically like that shutdown is going to cause a little bit of a problem yeah. for businesses and everything between but I think there will be right people, now there will be people who have street parties for the coronation I, I'm not sure I'll be participating I mean <laughs> uh, here's another question here um, it says question how do you put your investments in gold when they are in the traditional swap stocks. Wow. Uh, First, you have to liquidate your your uh, holdings of Schwab stocks. 
I, I assume Schwab is uh, the broker you have your investments with. You have to sell your investments <laughs> and then, you know, take the cash and you, you go to a bullion dealer and you buy real gold. You can't really buy real gold through a stockbroker. Right. Claims on nothing. Uh, here's uh, MW says uh, India, South America, and many Asians will buy it. The West days are numbered. BRICS has a long list of countries that are getting on board. Right. So speaking of which, you know, Mario, look for some more questions. I, I saw yeah, an article. Uh, low blood pressure has a question. If high inflation will destroy all debt, why not max all credit and, and get silver now? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I would say you. we don't know when hyperinflation will kick off. Mm -hmm. And uh, it could, this kind of scenario that we, we're we under uh, of inflation could keep going. And uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to live with the burden of having that debt yeah. over my yeah. head while right. waiting on the yeah. world to reset. Like, yeah, and uh, you never know, know what, what will happen uh, uh, until the hyperinflation kicks off. Your circumstances might uh, deteriorate, financial circumstances, and you might have to sell uh, your silver to pay off that debt. Uh, I'd right. rather just have no obligations to the bankers and uh, buy the silver outright. I, I told you, I think last week that I, I got a new iPhone and instead of paying for it, right, which I could have, I put it on a 0% credit, uh, which is okay because I, I'm not paying more over 24 months. And uh, if worse, uh, push comes to shove, I can always pay it off. But uh, I wouldn't be borrowing to buy silver nor gold. I, I think it's uh, it defeats the purpose of getting out of the system. Right. And also, you know, dollar cost averaging over time would, would definitely put you in a much better, healthier financial situation where you're not in debt to nobody. Because I, I personally, I'm not a big fan of debt, even though I know debt can be used, leverage to help mm. you out if you use it correctly. But I think just for me personally to, to do with that mindset to me is just, that doesn't set well with my spirit. So I couldn't, I, that's why I, I never preach it or do it, but some people do. So LBP, I know you, <laughs> uh, what else we got out here? Um, he, uh, commented the other day in one of my videos about that as well. About run up the credit card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's a model that people are using. So we all, we were seeing, we just showed an article saying that, you know, the households are in debt like never before they run up the credit cards. All right. But they doing it just to maintain, and I wonder well, how many people are that, still that, buying stuff for fun. That's what the powers that be want you to do, because if you stop borrowing, the, the system just <laughs> implodes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. I don't see any, any more questions out here. Oh, don't don't pay back if you can't. What can they do? Oh, OK, well, I guess they. Yeah, I, I just don't like being beholden to um, mm -hmm. financing companies, but uh, some people are good at it. I think, I don't know if you remember Jay Snip 4. He got out yeah, of his yeah. mortgage after the 08 crisis, but uh, you know, you, ha you have to go through a lot of hassle. Yeah. Um, go to <laughs> silver doesn't make you rich, it restores your personal power. 100%, Lawrence. Yeah, I agree with that. But it can also, uh, in times of a, a crisis and the currency collapse, it could actually uh, be of great advantage because when the the currency is destroyed that's the only uh, money uh, standing mm -hmm. gold and silver and you might be able to buy a lot of assets that you might not have been able to once when the system was quite steady right. I, but i agree with them uh, gold and silver are yeah you should hold them not to make you rich but to protect what you've produced already right so uh, so just piggyback on that gold and silver are great uh, wealth preservation tools, but they're also great forms of liquidity after stuff hits the fan, because then you'll have something to be able to go out into the real world. And uh, it, it's, you know, globally, you'll be able to put it to, to the, put it to work for you somehow, some way. So it is the best form of liquidity. That's why central banks themselves are, you know, getting their weight up <laughs> to protect themselves from their own malfeasance. Um, yeah. What else? We got? Oh, the, other thing, the other thing I was going to say about that and stuff, uh, I, I don't know if I said it, but I think peace of mind is a really good uh, thing to have. Mm. And that's why I try to steer away from that. Yeah. And I think that that can, can't be preached enough. Like having that peace of, that you have no debt of your head, even biblically speaking, you know what I'm saying? Like having debt 
in of itself is not, you know, God's best for you. He wants you to be the lender, not the borrower. Um, MW351, live and learn. There are rumors, states uh, saying U UFOs invasion may happen. Who knows? Who knows? Too many distractions. Yeah, that's the uh, alien invasion, isn't it? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I saw a, a meme saying uh, that uh, the aliens killed all our leaders and then the and then they came to earth and uh and they and and i think someone said to them oh welcome and they said <laughs> you know aren't you uh, worried no i said i'm glad you you guys are here <laughs> you know, they got rid of our leaders <laughs> yeah uh, apparently you know lake Hur huron is not far from me i guess they shot something down over the weekend but they never recovered nothing so it's like i think there was three three extraterrestrial or, or unidentified objects that were shot down on top of a balloon within a week and it's just it's gone now it's no it's no longer a headline story so oh my goodness anyway uh well we have 40 minutes mario i say we get ready to doubt it i don't see many questions um well uh, looking at so one thing i did want to mention is that uh the narrative might have changed slightly and the reason i mentioned the narrative is that that one article we didn't touch on, it says here, two Fed officials said on Thursday, the U.S. Central Bank likely should have lifted interest rates more than it did earlier this month and warned that additional hikes and borrowing costs are essential to lower inflation to deserve desired levels. And then there was another one here talking about uh, half a point hike rather than an anticipated quarter point. So based upon the figures that came out, that is not what they say they want. Do you see a half a point coming up in next month or or what? Yeah, I haven't looked at the uh, you know the futures market. They usually predict where that it would be. Uh, I mean, it's possible the CPI was a little higher than expected. PPI as well yesterday. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Fed must be concerned. But at the same time, I, I don't think the economy is doing as well. Uh, we, we saw the uh, Philly Fed drop mm -hmm. uh, really plummet to levels that we haven't seen since like the 2020 crisis and the 08 crisis but uh yeah the they're <laughs> they're having a tough time with uh with inflation i mean the central bank of brazil they're the ones doing the right thing they've got their uh, base rate at 13.75 percent and their cpi now is five and a half <laughs> so they've got if the but if the fed did that yeah it would uh probably bring, bring down inflation but it would bring the whole system down because there's so much derivatives leverage not just the government debt but look at consumers they're still borrowing uh, at record levels like we saw earlier in in our live stream yeah um well we will find out but in the meantime take advantage of opportunities that they present themselves and definitely continue to get your weight up my good people um all right well we are going to dial back so as always everybody thanks for joining in hope you guys got a chance to get a good synopsis of what's happening and realize the importance of you know if the debt blow as the debt bombs implode you don't want to be the last one holding the bag <laughs> and instead you want to have something real tangible that you can feel so we all know what that is but uh mario enjoy your weekend my friend any last thoughts you want to leave us with um uh well, let's see what last I love thought. You on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I thought you had the last thought today, but no, uh, just uh, yeah. I mean, there are a lot of distractions out there, and I I look at them and everything. But uh, I would say one thing is uh, don't be don't be scared by any of this uh, rubbish they throw at us, and uh, don't let uh, things. Uh, yeah, don't act in panic. Keep calm. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. All right, well, good people. Enjoy your weekend. Be blessed. Be safe. See you guys next week at 11, the same time, same place. Peace.